Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 62, and the topic today is a big one, the genitive plural, which is our last remaining uh, set of case endings that's really troublesome. As I've mentioned before, uh, from now on, once we get past the genitive plural, the endings are actually quite easy. So that's some good news. Okay, so today the, the main concern is just learning the forms, right? We're going to talk more about the use of the genitive and review that a little bit here in the coming lessons. Today we're just worried about what are the genitive plural case endings. Uh, let's start with a poster here advertising the Konstitutsiya uh, Soyuza Sovietskich Socialistichskich Respublik, right? The Constitution of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, right? Okay, so there is an example of genitive plural, plural right? The Soyuz is the union, and then we get of, right? So as we know, uh, genitive uh, forms in Russian usually translate very well into English using of. So the, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Respublika is a feminine noun, and we see here that in uh, the genitive plural feminine nouns, and also neuters, by the way, are going to usually take zero endings. A, 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 a so-called zero-ending form, meaning we just get rid of the a or the o. And so for, from respublika, we get respublik, right, which means something like of the republics. Well, of what republics? The sovietskich socialistichskich respublik. And we see here that the basic adjectival ending for all genders in the genitive plural is going to be ich, and as we're writing here because of the seven-letter spelling rule, ich. Okay, so let's start out with masculines, and just, uh, again, we're filling in the plural table now. We've now done two after today, right? Nominative and genitive plural. And um, so let's start with hard nouns like stol. We see the basic hard genitive plural ending is going to be of, right? So that's easy enough. So stali, nominative plural, and the genitive that becomes stalof, of tables. Okay, now the... Uh, Another important ending for masculine, soft masculines. Well, let's think about this for a moment. What would you expect the soft version of of to be? Well, probably yev, right? Yev, uh, or possibly yov, right? Okay, so anyway, and of course, yov would only be possible if, if that ending were stressed. Okay, so look first at musiei. That's a soft uh, masculine ending in the nikratkaya. Those are going to take yef and become, for example, museyev, right, of the museums. Now, another uh, kind of, we could think of it as, as maybe kind of an alternate ending, meaning it's maybe a little bit unusual. That ending is yay. Uh, masculine nouns that end in a soft sign are going to take yay. So slavar, right, uh, in the singular, soft masculine ending in a soft sign, ends up taking yay. And we get slavarie, right, of dictionaries. Okay, so again, here are the few, the, the, the examples down at the bottom. Film becomes filmif. That's just an ordinary hard masculine. Muzie, muzieev. That's a somewhat limited, you know, you don't see too many words like that. Masculine's an ending in ikratkaya, basically. Slavar, that's a soft sign that gives slavarie. By the way, that's an instressed noun. And there's one other category, uh, masculines that, hard masculines ending in a hushing consonant, like ch, right, zh, sh, sh, right? They also take ye. Uh, so kluch gives kluche, kluche. And a lot of those nouns are also in stress. Okay, so uh, one last note on stress, by the way. If we look over the plural forms there in the table, stali, stalof. Slavari, Slavarie, Muziei, Muziev. And so while there are always going to be exceptions, we can say that generally speaking, any stress irregularities we saw, any stress shifts we saw in the nominative, nominative plural will carry over to the genitive and to all the remaining forms. Okay, so there are exceptions, but that's a, a pretty reliable rule of thumb. Right, so a lot of things you see here that may seem like weird stress shifts in the genitive plural are going to be the same things we talked about already back when we discussed the nominative plural. Okay, what about adjectives quickly? As we mentioned, here we don't have to worry about gender in the plural, as is usually the case. We often don't have to worry about gender in plural forms. And so the basic adjectival ending is going to be ich, and the soft version would be ich, right, with e. We may also write ich if we have a seven-letter spelling rule issue. 
right? So for example, in Tiriesli film, what if we made that uh, genitive plural to say a lot of interesting films, many interesting films? That would be mnoga in Tiriesnich filmov. Okay, and now a soft adjective uh, as an example here. Seeing ye, remember, is a soft adjective. Uh, a lot of blue bicycles would be mnoga sinich velocipiedov. Right? Uh, what a beautiful image, right? A lot of dark blue bicycles. Reminds me of the old 80s song, 99 Luftballons. Okay, let's look at a poster quickly. Uh, this involves the word dabivatsa dabitsa, which takes the genitive. It takes an object in the genitive, kind of a fancy verb. But anyway, it says, dabiom sienovich spartivnich uspiechov, right? We will achieve new sporting uh, successes or something like that, literally. Right? So, uspiech uh, means success. Here again in the genitive plural, novich spartivnich uspiechov. Okay, so let's give a few uh, masculine examples here with, again, adjectives and nouns. Um, and again, you may pause the video and quiz yourself if you like. Rosawi nasok. Okay, and let's use here the generative plural following monoga, right? A lot of pink socks, for example, right? So following monoga, we're getting the generative plural. Monoga rosawich naskof. Right, hard masculine, we're getting rid of the mobile vowel. What about a lot of black boots? Mnoga chornich sabagov. Right, an in-stress noun. Hard noun. Tri is a latoy bracelet. How would we say a lot of gold necklaces? Uh, sorry, bracelets. Mnoga zolotich bracelietov. Hard masculine. Chitiri, uh, a lot of red uh, scarves. Mnoga krasnich platkov. Uh, again, a mobile vowel. We're seeing that walk ending in a lot of these nouns, and typically you'd expect that to that wa to be uh, a mobile wa. Piat, a lot of interesting museums. Monoga interesnich muzeyev. Okay, so there's that somewhat unusual yev ending. Shest, maladoy geni, a lot of young, many young geniuses, right? Okay, there's another masculine ending in ikratka, yeah? Mnoga maladich genyev, genyev. Siem, uh, many blue, dark blue umbrellas. Mnoga sinich zantov. Right, that's also in stress, an in stress noun. Okay, uh, again, watch the soft adjective sinyi, right? Sinich, ich is the genitive plural. Voisim, a lot of Soviet posters. That describes this textbook, right? Mnoga sovietskich plakatov. Dievits, many green carpets. Mnoga zelionich kavrov. Hard masculine mobile vowel. Dievits, many good questions. Mnoga haroshich vaprosov. Okay, there we're writing ich because of the seven letter spelling rule. Remember, by the way, that haroshi, as we discussed, that's not a soft noun. It looks like it could be here in the masculine form. But again, there we have e only because of the seven-letter spelling rule issue. Okay, adinat sits 11, uh, a great hero. So many great heroes would be mnoga vilikich giroyev. Okay, so there's another yev example, right? Giroy, uh, soft masculine ending in ikratkaya. Dvinatsich, number 12, a lot of bad presents. Mnoga plachich padarkov, another mobile vowel. Mnoga plachich padarkov, again writing E because of the seven-letter spelling rule. Okay, what about feminines and neuters? Well, we mentioned earlier that uh, these are pretty easy for the most part. Uh, hard masculines and hard neuters, we know that they're characterized by an ending in the nominative singular, right? An a ah or an o. Oh. Okay, in the genitive plural, we simply get rid of that ending, right? And we call that kind of technically a zero ending form, right? So let's look at the tables here. Gazeta, a hard feminine, becomes gaziet, right? Zero ending. And the word for window, aknoa, a hard neuter. Uh, look what happens here. We get rid of the o, right? We need a zero ending. And that would leave us with okn, okn, which is pretty hard to say, right? It's not very convenient. So that's a tricky cluster. And look what happens, right? The mobile vowel appears to break up that tricky cluster, right? And we get oken. 
Lachen. So watch out for that mobile vowel that comes in to kind of fill the gap to give some breathing room between two uh, consonants that may remain when we get rid of that um, ending. Okay, more on that in just a moment. So we have zero ending, and then what about soft feminines and plurals? Uh, sorry, feminines and neuters. There we also typically get the ye ending we already saw in the masculine, right? So, for example, nidelia, that's a soft feminine, right? Now, with that one, we get, uh, I, I misspoke a little bit. With feminines, we don't normally get the ye. We get a zero ending still, which in this case would be nidiel, nidiel. Okay, look at that carefully, what's happened here. We had nidielia, that ending was basically just showing, that ya ending was marking first a soft L followed by an ah vowel, right? Now it's only that final vowel we're really getting rid of, right? And, we, and here we just happen to be left with a soft stem. Right, so how do we show that? How do we show a form that no longer has an ah ending, but is simply the bare soft stem? Well, of course, we use a soft sign to do that, right? So note that spelling nidiel, right, with the soft sign. That's your genitive plural form. Now, to get back to what I was saying, uh, some uh, uh, soft feminines, uh, like these words ending in a soft sign plus a ya, right? Uh, we've talked about that uh, actually quite recently. I think we reviewed that a little bit, right, of that little spelling issue. Those are going to take ye, right? So simya means family. A lot of families would be simye, right? So that's kind of a a slightly special, you know, somewhat unusual form. You might want to circle it. Okay, now neuters, as we said, the hard ones are taking zero endings, but the soft neuters are always taking yay, right? So moria, soft neuter, right, becomes marie, marie, right? That yay ending will often be stressed, by the way. Uh, typically, it would be stressed. Okay, so let's look over a few more examples. First with just some hard... Uh, hard nouns, right? Feminines and neuters, we're getting zero ending. So sabaka becomes sabak. Strana, stran. Bluda, blut. Kniga, knik. Okay, so that's pretty easy, actually, right? Just getting rid of the ending. Now let's look at some more tricky, some trickier examples involving softness. Nidielia, as we saw, becomes nidiel. Again, imagine what's really happening here. We're just getting rid of the ah, that leaves us with uh, a soft L, right? That L isn't going to suddenly become hard just because we got rid of an ah sound, right? Uh, again, some of these examples, it's kind of hard to think of a lot of common examples li like this, but a, a pill in Russian would be pilulia. Okay, so that would become pilul, right? Same issue there as with uh, nigelia. Banya means a Russian bathhouse. Uh, the generative plural, that would be bany, bany. And finally, here's something a little bit different, idea, a borrowing, obviously. What happens if we get rid of that uh, ah? We're left with idea, idea, right? So hopefully you know enough about, enough about Russian orthography and spelling and whatnot and the sound system to realize what's going on there, right? It's really nothing weird at all. We've just, if you remember that, we could think of ya as consisting of the sounds ikratkaya ah, right? Ya. Well, if we get rid of an ah here, we're left only with the ikratkaya, right? And the final form is idye. Okay, so uh, let's look at some more examples with the mobile vowel, right? So um, how, do, how do mobile vowels work? Well, there's a lot to the story here historically, but we're just looking at this mostly from a pragmatic standpoint. And we, we now, uh, in today's lesson, have seen the full picture of how mobile vowels work in Russian. Let's think back a bit uh, to how mobile vowels can disappear, right? Uh, masculine nouns, we know, as we know, have, have no ending. They start out with zero ending in the nominative singular, like shinlok, for example. Okay, that's a zero ending form as well, masculine nominative singular. Now, this has a mobile vowel. The o, there is a mobile o, and we know that any ending we add to this form is going to, so to speak, squeeze out that mobile vowel. It's going to just vanish and we're left with shinki, or for example, atiat becomes atsi, kavyur becomes kavri. Those are all nominative plural forms, but again, we could take any other example, like shinka, atsa, kav, uh, kavra, genitive singular. We could take genitive plural, shinkov, atsov, kavrov, right? It would be the same story. We're adding the ending, the mobile vowel is vanishing. 
Okay, now, again, let's look at the kind of the opposite thing when we're dealing with feminines and neuters. Now, of course, those start out with an ending of their own, right, an ah or an o oh in the nominative singular. And here in the genitive plural, we're getting, we're getting rid of that ending. So vilka, which means a fork, we would give, get vilk, right? Now, there, again, we're left with this cluster, Typically, not always, the stuff with, with clusters, which clusters get broken up and which don't, is a bit of a guessing game sometimes. But by default, we would we would expect that final cluster to be broken up by a mobile vowel. So we get not vilk, but vilik. Vilik, meaning of forks. Akno, as we saw, becomes oken. Oken. Uh, banka becomes banak. Banak, right? Not bank, but banak. Okay, now remember uh, the spelling rule, right? We can't have, we, we usually would use o by default for a mobile vowel, but if it happens to follow a hushing consonant or a ts in an unstressed position, well, that's the five letter spelling rule. We can't write o in that position in Russian, right? Instead, we write yeah. So again, here's the spelling rule. We warned everyone back in the day that these spelling rules were going to haunt us everywhere we go in Russian. And here's another example. Right, so koshka, let's get rid of the ending. That would give us koshk. Okay, we get a mobile vowel, but we can't write o there. Instead, we get koshik, koshik. Or loshka, loshka becomes lozik, right, not loshk. Dochka, of daughters, is dochik, not dochk, dochk. Okay. Here's a famous poster here. Vuipolnim plan velikich rabot. Literally, we will fulfill or carry out the plan of great works. Right? Rabota here in the genitive plural. Rabot. Okay, let's look at a few other details here. Uh, sometimes uh, getting rid of an ending and then we get a stress shift or something may reveal a latent yule. We talked about this last chapter, right? How if the stress shifts around, we can end up with a, a yaw rearing its head. So, for example, jena, whose plural, by the way, is jonli. That would be in the in the nominative plural, right? Jonli. Genitive, pl genitive plural is jon. Jon. Silo becomes siol. Sistra becomes sistior. Okay, there's one that's a little bit weird. That nominative, nominative plural was siostri, if you remembered, right? So again, this genitive form is a little bit weird. And you may remember that uh, sistra, we, we, we grouped in with those irregular uh, nouns referring to family members, right? A lot of those involve irregularities, this being another one, right? So sistior means of sisters. Okay, uh, ribro uh, means rib, and the genitive plural would be Robier, Robier. I have a little trouble saying that, by the way. I went to speech therapy for R's, <laughs> R's and L's, so uh, I do have trouble sometimes saying them. I don't know. That one gives me real trouble. Okay, anyway, uh, Ozera means uh, a lake, so the general plural is Azior. Okay, so for all these examples, in case you're wondering, these are all unpredictable, right? You never really know just by looking that, you know, the, this yeah that's lurking around is actually a, a yaw, right? And again, the the stress happens to shift onto it and it, it shows its true colors, right? So there is no way to know this. These are just examples and you have to kind of learn them as you go. But again, there, there aren't really that many of these, of these words like this. Okay, now let's look at just some spelling details. Kuchnya. Okay, let's go through this step by step. What would, that means kitchen, a uh, soft feminine, so the our first step, if we get rid of the ah, would be kuchny, kuchny. Okay, but we have a cluster, right? Right, a final cluster. We're getting an o to come in to uh, break up that cluster. That gives us kuchny, kuchny. Okay, so with most of these examples, they're really interesting to analyze, and you you'll see that it's actually really good practice in terms of again mastering Russian, the Russian sound system and the spelling system. Because a lot of things in these generative plurals that look irregular at first glance are not at all, at all right? It's just an issue of sp kind of spelling technicalities. Um, another example would be pismo. Okay, we would start with pism, pism, zero ending. 
that we're left with the final cluster. Uh, but we don't know we, we we don't need or here because we have a soft S P C, right? So instead of or, which would be kind of the hard uh, a hard mobile vowel, we get ge instead, and that gives us pisim pisim. What about cafeña cafeña, right? Which means a coffee house. Okay, cafeña cafeña would be sort of our our first guess. But remember, ikratka is also a consonant. So we kafyein does indeed involve a consonant cluster. But yeah, ikratka, sorry, is soft. So we don't write o as our mobile vowel. We get yeah instead. Kafyein is our end result. Kafyein. There's a really tricky one. But again, there's nothing at all unpredictable about that, actually. Kapieka, uh, similarly, meaning a kopek. Kapieik. Uh, is the genitive plural, right? Kresla gives kresil. Okay, that one is unpredictable a bit, right? There's no reason to expect that to, to get ye yeah instead of o, but it does. Okay, uh, similarly, piesnya becomes piesin. Right, again, that's unpredictable in the sense that the s is not shown to be soft there. Um, right, so those final two examples are a bit uh, tricky. Uh, but again, in most cases in the genitive plural, you'll see that a lot of forms that look weird, if you think about them carefully, they're actually not. Of course, some are. Right? So, okay, uh, anyway, uh, here's a poster, uh, kind of a peculiar one in the history of Russian uh, gender equality, I guess. Right? Stalin tells us that there were no such women, nor could there have been such women in the old days. And uh, without getting into it too much, I guess you could argue that, you know, th well, let's put it this way. The, the Soviets, at least in terms of their propaganda, they, they did push gender equality type quite heavily, especially sort of in the earlier decades, right? And so if we, th if we compare the Soviet period to the imperial period, then I think you could fairly say that women were... Uh, well, they, they, could, they could hold more, much more prominent positions. Let's just put it that way. Okay, but obviously you could probably talk about that all day and write several dissertations on the topic. Our concern here is that uh, we're using the genitive plural to talk about non-existence, right? There were no women like this back in the day it, it, before the Bolshevik Revolution. Okay, so let's do a few uh, exercises here, right? Uh, now, we're previewing some uh, issues here in terms of combining uh, numbers with nouns, and this is a little bit tricky, but all the examples here basically are going to call for genitive plural forms, right? So we're going to have to talk more about this later. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit already. But basically, numbers five and above uh, are taking genitive plural after them. Okay, so uh, again, more on that later. Okay, so five new books. Piet Novich. Knig. Okay, remember all the adjectives here are going to be either ich or if they're soft, they'll take ich, and we'll also write ich if we have a seven letter spelling rule issue. Vyat novich knig. Zero ending. Okay, six good dogs. Sheist dobrich sabak. Zero ending. Uh, eight fresh apples. Voisim svejich. They're the ich because of the spelling rule. Yablok. Right, so zero ending again. Nine Russian dishes. A blyoda uh, can mean a, a literal dish, but it usually means a, uh, you know, a, a dish like in a national cuisine. Devit uh, ruskich blyod. Again, ich because of the seven-letter spelling rule. Twenty uh, dark blue cars. Dvadsit sinich mashin. Seven effective medicines. Siem effektivnych lekarstv. Okay, there's an example. You know, this issue of where do you have mobile vowels and where don't you is not always very consistent or intuitive, right? So we look at this, we drop the o to get our zero ending, and we're left with lekarstv, which is actually, we see, er, s, te, v, that's a four consonant cluster, right? So that seems like something that you would definitely expect to be broken up. Uh, but it isn't, right? So again, this issue of what, which clusters a given language will tolerate and which it won't is not always predictable. So we just have to deal with that. And, you know, things like that, you'll just 
kind of pick up on it later. There are other words with this uh, stvo uh, suffix, basically, and none of them would be broken up in the genitive plural. Okay, uh, now here, so uh, here are some that do have a mobile vowel, right? Uh, so eleven white plates, adinatsit bielich tarielik. Okay, so zero ending tarielk, but then we split up the lk cluster with the mobile vowel tarielik. Uh, Ten cups of tea, diesit chashik chaya. Okay, so there we write e, yeah not or because of the uh, five-letter spelling rule, right? We can't have an unstressed or after sh. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, butilik piva. Right, 99 bottles of beer. By the way, note here with when we're specifying uh, the liquid, right, a cup of tea, a bottle of beer, a glass of wine, right, that of wine portion is not changing, right? That's not going to become plural or something, right? Only the how many cups or bottles or glasses we have. So, uh, 12 glasses of wine. Jinatsits bakalif vina. Okay, that's a little bit out of place there because it doesn't have a mobile vowel. It's not f feminine, right? So, a little goof on my part. But hey, it's still genitive plural. Bakalif, bakalif, right? It's just a, a masculine um, noun. Okay, seven large windows. Uh, Siem Balshich Orkin, mobile or. 30 Russian students, female students. 30 Ruskich Studentek. Five younger sisters, five little sisters. Piat Mladshich Sistior. Okay, so there's the, the latent your uh, rearing its head there, and we get Sistior. Uh, again, that's something we just have to know. We can't predict that, really. Okay, well, at all. We can't predict it at all there. Okay, uh, 15. Uh, 15. Uh, a rumka is a little, it's basically a shot glass. A rumka. So 15 shot glasses or little glasses of vodka. Pidnatsit rumak, rumak, excuse me, vodki. Pidnatsit rumak vodki. Okay, now some uh, other issues here, some that maybe where the spelling may be a bit trickier. Piaz Barshik Kuchen, excuse me, Kuchen. Piaz Barshik Kuchen. Okay, so there's the tricky spelling, but as we saw, that isn't really, there's nothing irregular about that. It's just a little bit tricky looking. We're still basically dealing with a zero ending and then the mobile vowel coming in. Okay, six golden rings. Sheist Zalatich. Kaliats, Kaliats, and there we get a yeah because of the soft L, right? Kaliats, Lord of the Rings is Vlastilin Kaliats in uh, Russian. Eight difficult weeks, Voisim Trudnich Nidiel. So again, soft L at the end. All we're getting rid of there is the A ah vowel sound, but the L remains soft. Fifty folk songs, Pidisiat Narodnich Piesian, Piesian. Okay, there we do get a, get a yeah, that one's a little bit, you know, not quite predictable, right? But anyway, that's the genitive plural, piesian. By the way, that's also irregular in the sense that we don't, we don't, the, the N becomes hard. So that, you might circle that, that's, that's just irregular, we have to say. It's just, that's not predictable at all and uh, generally doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's the form. Okay, 10, uh, 10 letters from dad. Diesit piesium atatsa. Okay, this one does make sense. We have a soft S, so we're, our mobile vowel is yeah, and then we have the hard M at the end, PCM. A lot of good ideas. Mnoga haroshich idei. Okay, think about that. That spelling looks weird, but it's actually not, because all we're getting rid of is the A vowel, and so that leaves us with our ikratkaya consonant sound at the end, and we write idei with an ikratkaya. Okay, let's look quickly at special soft nouns. So this is uh, just kind of... for to, to be very careful here. What did they do? Well, criteri, right, the masculine, that's just like muzie, right? It's a masculine ending in ikratka, so that takes yev, as we would expect. Now look at the feminines and neuters. Genitive plural ends in e, right? E ikratka. 
which again may look strange at first glance, but if we analyze this a little bit, look at lexia. That's feminine. We're going to get zero ending. We get rid of the a ah, vowel, and that leaves us with the ikratkaya sound at the end. So although this looks weird, it's in, it's totally regular, in fact. And the same is true of zdanyi, right? Zdanyi, yeah. If we drop the a, eh, right, the final vowel, we, we're left with zero ending zdanyi. So you might want to circle this and just think of them as kind of maybe a tricky looking spelling issue. But again, if we think carefully about that, we see that it's not weird at all. Uh, a poster, We will not yield, we will not give back or give up the uh, the gains of October, meaning we're not, we're not giving up on the revolution or whatever. We're not surrendering everything we've won through the revolution. Here we have a genitive plural as the object of a negated verb. So we've seen that before. It's something to watch for, especially in formal Russian, uh, literary Russian, especially if it's older, you almost always see the genitive uh, used for objects of negated verbs, like nyat daidim. Okay, <clears throat> let's practice the genitive plural here. Again, same thing, but with uh, special softs. Uh, six new dorms, sheist novich abshijiti. Okay, so once you know the pattern here, it's pretty easy. Uh, a lot of boring lectures. Mnoga skuchnich lexi. Five large portions. Pjais balshich porsi. Chitiri. A few or not many um, cheap cafeterias. Mala dishovich cafeterias. Okay, or we could say inexpensive cafeterias. Now remember, the normal word for a cafeteria in Russia would be stalovaya, in which case we'd say mala dishovich stalovich. But again, cafeteria is uh, just here as an example of, a, of the rather unusual, relatively unusual, special soft masculine pattern. Uh, ten historical uh, buildings, historic buildings. Dieset historiczkich zdaní. Šest a hundred old photos. Sto starych fotografii. Siem, there, there, there are no good uh, relationships, right? So, uh, or good relations between the U.S. and Russia, we might add, right? Uh, okay, so this is just a, a genitive of non-existence. Niet haroshich atnasheni. Right? Uh, that we could say there's not a good relationship in the singular, but that's a noun that's used quite often in the in the uh, plural in Russian. Good relations. Okay, voicem, twenty young geniuses. Dvadsit maladich geniev, geniev. Dievit. A lot of or many funny stories. Mnoga smishnich istori. Uh there were no good uh schedules. Okay, so past tense, non existence statement. Nebula oh, sorry, no new new schedules. Nebula novich respisani. There were no new schedules. I didn't say uh let's see, nine important criteria. Right? Dievit Vajnich Priteriev, right, special soft masculine. Dvinatsit, a lot of boring comments. Mnoga skuchnich komentariev, another special soft masculine. Dvinatsit, a few interesting opinions. Mala interesnich mnieni. Okay, let's quickly summarize one thing that's kind of tricky, right? What about this alternate ending, yay, right? Which, let's just review, uh, you know, which, what noun types take this genitive plural ending. Number one, all nouns ending in a soft sign. So that could include masculine, soft masculines like slavar or e nouns like vieš, right? Anything in a soft sign. Number two, most soft neuters, right? Except, of course, for special soft neuters, as we just saw, right? So... Uh, or polia, but not a special soft like zdanya. Number three, masculine nouns ending in a hushing consonant. So, zh, ch, sh, sh, for example, kluch. We expect those to take ye, and the, the ye, uh, well, the ye generally is usually going to be stressed, we should mention. Chitiria, uh, soft feminines in soft sign ya. Okay, so that's a rather peculiar, peculiar little type. 
Uh, we've seen a few of those stacia will become stacie. Um, okay, and by the way, the saw sign does vanish in the spelling there. Okay, so let's do a few of these. So all of these in the box here are taking yay, so you're sort of told that. Well, except, actually, most of them will, most of them will. So let's watch for exceptions. Okay, noich, soft sign, nachey. Pisatil, soft sign, pisatilier, pisatilier. That, there it's not stressed, it stays put. Three, dien, nyei, nyei. Right, ends in the soft sign uh, with the mobile vowel. Chitiria novest novastie, right? News item, news items. Uh, Piaz, actors, okay, that's just a hard masculine, so that's going to be akturof, right? No reason for that to take yay. Six, part uh, genitive plural will be chistie, right? It ends in a soft sign. Number seven, that's a special soft uh, feminine. So genitive plural will be teori. Eight, etage. That's a masculine ending in a hushing consonant, so we get etage. Etage. Dievit, kluch, masculine ending in a uh, hushing consonant, we get kluche. Uh, Diesit, vrach, doctor, masculine ending in a hushing, vrache. Okay, um, Number 11, pliage, we get pliage, pliage, right? Uh, masculine ending in a je. We would expect that probably to be pliage, but it just isn't. And uh, I guess one reason is it's, it's a borrowing, we could say, uh, but, you know, etage is also a borrowing. So anyway, again, we have to just sometimes deal with discrepancies in Russian. Do not say tavarishi, tavarishi, right? Masculine ending in a... Uh, hushing consonant. Thirteen uh, dishes, blood, right? So that's obviously just a hard neuter, zero ending. Chitirnatsits, uh, morya, soft neuter, right? So that's going to be marie, and again, the ye is stressed. Pitnatsits, polya, field, that's going to be palie, again with the stress shift. Sixteen, statia, there's one of those feminines in soft sign ya, that'll be statie with no soft sign anymore. 17, idea. That's just an ordinary soft feminine, so that's going to be idea, zero ending. And 18, simia, uh, that's simie, simie. Okay, now a few exceptions just quickly, and these are kind of sort of hard to account for, so let's just look them over. Djerva, djerva becomes djerevyev, stul, stulyev, volos, valos, Platya, Platyev, right, that's pretty weird for a soft neuter. Uh, glass, glass, ras, ras. Okay, those are two examples of actually a very old pattern. Um, back in the day, or in, for example, in Church Slavonic, the uh, genitive plural was the same as the nominative, nominative singular. And you do still see that sometimes in Russian, uh, very few examples, but you do see it. And here are two examples. Glass, glass, ras, ras. Um, ucha becomes uche, and brat becomes bratyev. Right, so those are, we just say those are irregular. There's not really much else to say about them. Now, remember that um, here as elsewhere, if we have a borrowed noun that ends in an o, ye, e, u, u, uh, those don't decline, period. And that also extends to the genitive uh, plural, and also the nominative plural, of course, right? So, menu, taxi, cafe, coffee, right? Those don't change anywhere, including in the genitive plural. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, we've learned the genitive plural. We're going to practice it a little bit more tomorrow, talking about uh, this issue of existence versus non-existence. We'll review that quickly. And um, so anyway, until then, let's vidanya tavarishi.